Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Spring Porter with Spring Solutions LLC. In this video, I'm going to be providing you with the simple steps to a simple lawsuit. So this is like for a breach of contract for bankruptcy unclaimed funds. Let's say a former client, a client of yours did not pay you directly. Um, these are the steps that you can follow um, for a lawsuit. So keep in mind that I am not an attorney. This information is not indicated as legal advice. Um, I did, however, work for HOA and condominium lawyers um, in Maryland, and I did do simple lawsuits. Uh, again, for people who didn't pay their HOA fees, we would sue them, garnish them, put liens on their property. Uh, and I dealt with some of this at the credit union where I worked on the back, you know, doing it on the back end um, after, you know, the loan went bad. So at any rate, um, the suit process, obviously, you can always seek an attorney, but you're probably going to be dealing with claims that are, are smaller. Like, for example, my case that I had in Virginia that I was almost going to sue was for $1,100 and he didn't pay me. So I wasn't going to pay an attorney to, to do that for me and pay him, what, four or $500 when I can just really do it myself. The forms are on most of the county websites. Um, they tell you, you know, what you need, print these off, fill this in. They tell you the whole process. So as an American citizen, as a business owner, you have the right to due process. You can do this and represent yourself. You have a day to be heard in court that is applicable to you. Um, you can utilize that, okay? You don't always need someone to speak on your behalf. You know your file better than anyone. You know the client. You know what's going on. All right, so anyway... FDCPA, that is the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. It's Title 15. You can always read it. It basically goes over the guidelines and the processes to how you as a creditor are actually to be in communication with the debtor. So, for example, even if, as a funds locator, you don't want to call someone at 3, 4 in the morning and say, hey, you got money coming back. Same thing is true when you're calling a debtor for funds because they owe you money. You're not calling them at 6 in the morning or at you know, 12 midnight. You're calling them with, within regular business hours. So, and I believe the FDCPA, it's between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. is when you really should be calling them. Make sure that you are, you know, you can read over this and review it. Check your state codes to make sure you are aware of what the statute of limitations is. All debt has an expiration date. Even taxes, taxes over like, what, 10 years. I don't think the, um, the, the IRS usually goes after um, those particular, you know, debts. Um, so everything has expiration date. And in Maryland, for example, if you have a contract with someone, you have three years to basically sue them. So find out what that is. Check your state code. Review the FDCPA. Make sure you have a signed contract. The signed contract, the invoice, something in an email that says who is to pay what and what percent. All of that needs to make sure you can find those things because you're going to have to attach it to the lawsuit. So the first step in the process, after you have that background information, you, there's a 10-day letter. And the 10-day letter in Maryland is uh, basically saying, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so. We were basically in, um, we were doing business together. You failed to pay me based on pursuant to our contract. And um, if you don't call me or, you know, make good on your payment arrangements with this particular debt, in 10 days, I'm going to you know, hand this over to our lawyer or I'm going to sue you or send you over to, you know, a collections agency. So it has that language in there. After that letter expires, if you don't hear from them, if you hear from them, great. Maybe they'll call you. You'll work it out. This is the end of the lawsuit process. That's basically what happened to me. I was almost in about to send this 10 day letter. And then um, because I said, hey, I'm going to sue you. Um, I'm going to send you out a letter. And when I said that, he finally you know, called me and worked out payment arrangements, right? So sometimes after this letter, you may get someone to call you and work out payment arrangements. If not, after the letter expires, you're going to have to draft a complaint. Go look on the small claims court. Look at the dollar amount. Sometimes it has to be below, you know, $3,000 or $5,000, depending on where you live. It may be state court in some areas, or it may be magistrate court in others, small claims court in others. Everybody's, you know, is listed differently. Go look for the forms. You can fill them in. You're the plaintiff because you are bringing about the lawsuit. In some districts, I believe you have to fill in interrogatories. Some of those forms, again, are listed right on the website. And it's basically asking the debtor questions like, where do they work? How much money do they get paid? Do they have any tax returns? Where do they bank? Where do they do business? But they're asking them questions about assets and personal property because that is how you know, you're going to find out how you're going to get paid. 
So there you have the complaint interrogatories. So you draft that. Attached to the uh, complaint, you want to make sure you have your contract as exhibits. Make sure you have your, um, and that's why it's important to keep good records. Keep those emails, save the emails, use your CRMs because you can pull that up and essentially use them later in a lawsuit if you needed to. So you attach everything, you know, to the complaint as exhibits. And then you are going to either have the sheriff serve the debtor with the complaint or you're going to utilize a process server. And there are different fees depending on which state you're in. It will determine, you know, how much the stuff is. To draft a complaint does come with a fee, uh, so you have to be aware of that. And um, you can always ask for in the complaint that the lawsuit fees be returned to you and the debtor will pay you at the end. So then um, keep in mind that the debtor will then be the defendant, right? So after you get them served by sheriff or process server, keep in mind that that service sheet also needs to be filed in with the court, right? So your complaint is filed in with the court. After they get served, that's followed in with the court. You can sue someone um, by publication, depending on where you are, maybe like in a new, like, you know, newspaper or something in some states. Some states you can serve them at their job. You can serve them, you know, um, at their uh, home. After that, after they've been served, some states will have to, you'll have to go to a hearing. Um, in other states, um, you may not need to go to a hearing but if the debtor doesn't answer your complaint and, and file it in, they may uh, enter a default judgment. So the judge may, after some time and there's no you know, communication from the debtor, they'll automatically grant you the case and you, you basically will win the case. Um, again, every district is slightly different. But at any point of these particular entries, you know, from the complaint, to the service, to the hearing, the debtor can call you at any time and make payment arrangements. And that's really what you're wanting. You really don't want to sue anyone. You just want your money. And so this is a real aggressive way to make sure that they do pay you. But from experience, um, there are some people that just don't respond to you regardless. So you may sue them, you may get them served at your, their job, and they may still not call you. <laughs> okay. And you may get a, a judgment and they still won't call you. So just keep that in mind, too. It can go either way. Again, they can call you for payment arrangements. It would be like a promissory note. Make sure you have it written down either via email or you can actually get a promissory note template online or maybe even on the website of the state agency. You know, the local courts may give you a template for a promissory note. Write in, you know, the terms to how they're going to pay you back. Maybe like in my instance, the guy said he was going to pay me $400 the first payment. And then he'd pay $150 um, every month, right? And make sure you have, you know, that date on there. So that is a promissory note. You're making payment arrangements with the debtor. And after that, let's say that you don't hear from them. They don't make any payment arrangements, but you did get a judgment. So at that point, the judgment is not going to give you the money that you're wanting or you're seeking. You're going to have to do additional skip tracing to find assets. So you're going to either have to garnish them put a lien on their property for the amount that they owe you. And if anything were like to be sold or anything like that for property, they would have to pay your lien first. So that's one way you can do it. It's a long way, um, but it is a way. And you can also uh, garnish their bank account or their employer. So um, you have to have a judgment before you garnish someone. So you can't go from 10-day letter to garnishment. Now, you have to follow all these steps. You have to get a judgment before you garnish someone. Again, these are different state, uh, you know, nuances that come up and they're all a little bit different. So the good thing about bankruptcy unclaimed funds, if you ever were to face an issue where no one, the debtor didn't pay you and you had to go to court, you got a judgment, you can always skip trace and find assets through their bankruptcy petition. Remember, PACER has all of their documents listed. Now, it may be old, but it is a place to start. You have their where they're employed. You have banking information, other property that they may have. Um, so you have a place to start. You can utilize that and call their employer and verify employment. If you know that they're employed there, there is your garnishment information there. Um, and again, the garnishment information should also be in the same place where you got the complaint information and the interrogatories. So all of that is on your county website. So, um, and that is essentially the simple um, suit process 
from beginning to end. You start with a 10-day letter. You make sure you have your contract. Make sure you're within the statute of limitations. You go through all these steps, complaint, you got them served. You may or may not have a hearing. Then there's a judgment that's entered. You may or may not somewhere along here have a promissory note. If not, you go straight to garnishment or some kind of lien against the property for your amount. So there's, um, you know, other nuances that obviously come up after this. There's post-judgment interrogatories that you can send out. So that's after the judgment is entered and you still don't have skip tracing information or assets. You can send another set of interrogatories again and find out where they are. Um, and again, this is a timeline that you have to follow. Uh, some days it's maybe 45 days from a complaint to judgment if there's no activity in the middle. Every state is different. So again, follow your local rules. Of course, you can always, again, seek an attorney if you need to, but it is not always necessary. There are some things that you can handle on your own, for example, okay? This is this is one of them. You know the case better than anyone. All right, so I'm just pointing this out here in case anybody was kind of wondering, what is the suit process? If I ever needed to call a lawyer, what should I be asking for? And this is also, also helpful for you. Let's say you go with a lawyer or go with one, Again, sometimes they miss the mark. They have so many cases, they may forgot to mail in your um, process server certificate. So you're reading the court docket, you're trying to fo follow up on something. You're like, I know they were served. Like, what happened? You know, sometimes they miss the mark. Sometimes they forget about the promissory note. Sometimes they forget, they leave it at judgment and they forget to do the other part and search for um, assets. Lawyers don't always have the best case management. So there are times where it may pay for you to pay it, you know, do this process on your own um, and you represent yourself. That is allowed um, in case you, you needed a reminder. It is allowed to represent yourself. All right. So I just wanted to put that out there in case anybody needed to do this. Or if you wanted to seek an attorney, you can probably, you know, ask him about this information, about how it works, just so you can have a little bit more knowledge. So I hope that this is helpful to you. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.